Welcome back to my vlog series where I take you along with me on my jobs and learn with me along the way. In the last episode, I did five jobs in one day, but I made it a two-part vlog to keep it to a reasonable length. This is the second part, and it's one inspection and repair job in the country club done over several visits. You may learn things here that you wouldn't otherwise learn anywhere else, so come along for the ride. On this job here, I'm going to do an assessment of the irrigation system and see how well it's performing, see if there's any improvements that need to be done. So, you see the dry spots we have here? This one is bent forward, so it's only spraying to right here. So that's why it's missing this. This one is sp spraying here and missing it. And that one over there is turned off. So I'll turn that nozzle back on and see if we can get this covered in here. Yeah, I've got that on now and now it's hitting in this area now. But I see a lot of water coming out here. So that riser must be busted under there. So this one here, that nozzle is not spraying well and it's not even spraying over this direction and it's um, leaking. That pop-up needs to be replaced. And it's spraying all over the steps. That nozzle needs to be replaced. It's not hardly doing anything. So this is only spraying to here. That's why this is all dry. And it's not spraying over here. So that's why this is dry. Because this is spraying over it. There's nothing spraying back this way and hitting this area or from over here this is okay in here that nozzle's turned off or clogged and that one under there is being blocked by the shrub okay this one this is barely spraying, so that pop-up needs to be raised up and nozzle replaced. So it's these sprays are missing this area. That nozzle needs to be replaced. There's nothing hitting this area. This spray here is only reaching to here. This one's only spraying in this area. So this needs to be adjusted. That nozzle there needs to be replaced. is doing okay but that one should be spraying into this area this one's spraying the sidewalk that needs to be adjusted let's see if I can do it now yep okay. this one is only spraying to here so that's why you've got that dry spot there and that one's spraying over it. This nozzle may need to be replaced. That nozzle's clogged. This one's doing okay. That one's doing okay. 
This one needs to be raised. It's just hitting this area. It's only going to there, that's why this is dry. And there's no head in that corner. In this flower bed line, it appears that we have a broken pipe with all that water flowing. But I'm not 100% sure on that. It's definitely something going on because so there's um, not enough water pressure for these to pop up all the way. Like here. There's nothing wrong with the seal on that pop-up. It's just it's not popping up all the way, see? That nozzle needs to be replaced. That one's watering the lawn as well as the beds. As is that one. I don't know if that's intentional. Uh, I didn't show you anything in back. There wasn't really anything exciting to see, so I spared you. But there was two valves in back um, in valve boxes down in the ground that activate, but the uh, water's not doing anything. One of them, actually, there's a pipe break I'm going to have to dig up and deal with. The other, I don't know what the situation is, so the valve may not be opening. So I'm going to have to deal with those. So now the next step, now that I have all this written down and the notes, what needs to be done, the next step is to turn the paper over and map where all the valves are and what they water. I call it mapping the valves. So the way I do this um, is when the valves are scattered around the yard like this I look at my list and I do my best guess on which valves these are in this case I'm guessing five and six or vice versa um, and then I turn that nozzle away from me so it's not spraying on me and I own oh, that one too I have put my rain jacket on and I'm gonna put my hood on to reduce me getting soaked. Your insignificant rebellion. So when I get ready to do this, I have flat blade screwdriver, a hefty one, and I can Get the lid off. Then I will turn on number five and I will hold that solenoid down there and I can feel it activate if this is number five. Otherwise, I'll try number six and I should feel it kick on. So that's how I go around and figure out which valve is which. I'm turning them on using my remote, but another way you can do it is you can just turn them on manually. I just avoid doing that because you never know what when something's gonna pop out. So that's the flower beds. And this one over here. Is the lawn. So, yes, it was five and six. I'm going to go around and do the rest of the yard. I'm not going to record it, but you got the idea. Okay, this can be mapped a number of different ways. This is just the way I did it this time on this property. But you can see how the number one, I 
don't know where it is because it's just a bunch of cobble in that bed so it's buried under there somewhere I'm sure and then there is that corner right there and we've got three valve boxes and BR stands for brass it's a an old brass valve and so you got number two number three and number four 1.5 is a one and a half inch valve and then we go over here that one I showed you that's five and six there so all that drawing gives a reference of where it is in the back in the south patio bed as I note here there's three right together and that's what we have and nine and ten are on the up opposite side of the yard oh I gotta label that north bed um, and we've got two valves in there the number ten I've already replaced about a month ago and that's it so that's it here I'm going to uh, create an email report and I will scan this map and email it to them and I will uh, in the report I'll give an estimate for how much it'll cost to do the repairs and any other notes that they may need that can go in their permanent record they can file for future reference here's an example of a card being written up with pen so now if we want to change the order of things, we cannot do it without making a mess. So make sure to use pencil. On these sheets on the front page, I always put their name, um, both spouses, and then I put um, the address and the date and any other pertinent information. But it's usually the basics that I put on here. Also, on the uh, address information, I don't bother to put zip code and all that kind of stuff. Just the street address and the city. And then I put the name of the person that I'm actually dealing with. It's usually just one spouse. I put their name first. And that tells me that that's who I'm dealing with. Because in the future, I may not remember. It could be years from now before I see them again. When I do these inspections, uh, it's up to you how you do it, um, and every situation is different. If I know that I'm more than likely going to be doing the work, I just bill all at the same time after I do the repairs. I, don't, I just throw the inspection in on the same invoice. For me, it's a way of showing them that I trust them, and it really builds a lot of rapport. Um, there are times when I'm not sure. Uh, especially on a new client this, these people I've done work for in the past and I know they're gonna keep me so but uh, so sometimes I'll do an inspection on a new account and I'll go ahead and get paid right then if I not sure I'm gonna be if I'm not sure that they're gonna have me do the work so it's up to you I have water flowing out of this area here when the sprinklers are turned on so I have a feeling the risers broken under the pop-up but we may end up replacing the whole pop-up while we're at it well this was screwed into this and this was completely loose so apparently the fitting on this end <coughs> down there somewhere is busted for that to slide right off so I'm gonna have to dig this up some more and get at that yep so here it is that's the broken fitting and it was screwed into that elbow down there first thing we want to do is make sure there's nothing else broken in here before I replace that and we're gonna actually improve on this to make it more flexible to help keep it from breaking again because this was more likely broken from a car driving over it So first thing I got to do is try to get that broken part of the fitting out of that elbow. It's threaded in there. Okay, I got it out with the easy out. I had to dig 
quite a cavern under here to be able to get that down in there because you have to be horizontal with it so then i screwed a plug into it not tight tight just enough to test this and make sure there's nothing broken in there so let's see what happens good okay so I'm going to use this PRS 30 and a new swing arm if you've done these before you'll understand that trying to get this spun onto here is going to be a trick because um, you have to go you're going to be using that end and you're going to be screwing it on this way. Well, to do that, that means that hole has to be um, about eight inches deeper. <laughs> and I don't want to do that. And I do want more flexibility here. So I'm going to put this on. And, that'll, and then I'll leave it in this position where it's straight up. And then, and then I, all I have to do is screw it on this way into that into that fitting so I'll show you okay I've added a Marlex so I've got a Marlex at either end and then I can just screw this on vertically and okay, now it's ready for me to screw the pop-up on Now I have plenty of flexibility here to put this pop up right where I want it. And it's totally flexible. Those Marlexes. So I've got two Marlexes there, one here, and this is flexible. So this should never break again. Okay, hey, we're back in business. Sometimes I forget to start recording before I start digging. Anyway, this area here, when I did the inspection, the water was flowing out of here like crazy and running like a river down there. But it wasn't directly related to this. I turned the nozzle off and I held this up here, hold the shaft up to make sure that we had a good seal so to make sure that the water wasn't just from flowing out of this because we've got some reason that these pop-ups on this flower bed line are not working quite like they should. I don't know if there's too many heads on the line or if it's just because of a broken pipe down here. I'm not sure. But I'm leaning towards there being a problem with the swing arm uh, related to this. So that's what I'm digging for right now. And I just found this big old root here. See how wide it is? That's not cool, but that's not, I doubt that's what broke the swing arm, if that's the case, because this is pretty high, and I know that swing arm's way down there, so it's probably not related. Okay, there we are, another busted swing arm elbow in the fitting there. So I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to get that fitting out, the broken part out, and then put a plug in there, turn the water on to see if this is the whole story. Hopefully that's all there is. And then I can just hopefully just put a new 90 on there and be good. We'll see.
Well, there's no other water showing up. And that one's spraying better. They're all spraying better. So apparently that was the problem. I decided that in this situation here, there's sprays all the way around here getting into this area. The roots from this and the tree are under the lawn getting plenty of water and this stuff's getting watered so we really don't need this sprinkler here so this will help increase the water pressure on this line too so I made an assembly here with a half by six cutoff and a half by three extension cutoff and a th half inch thread cap and two marlecs down there so that we can actually straighten this out because this here is pointed the wrong way well it's fine but it's uh, at an angle a bit so we need two so we can get the, this to be vertical and I like I could have just put a plug in there and left it at that but then nobody would ever know this was here in case things changed in this flower bed and they could use a spray here they would never know that's there so I always like in these cases I like putting these up here where the cap is just barely above the surface that way somebody can see that it's there and know they can use it if they want to. All right, so now we got flexibility and good to go. Okay, so I turned off the nozzles on these back here because they really aren't needed. This tree's getting plenty of water from that one that's behind it and from the lawn and this one. So this one had a 15 foot nozzle on it as did that one over there. Um, I changed this one to an 8 footer and I changed that to an 8 footer because it was a 10 footer and obviously even an 8 footer is too much but it needed to be able to reach over to the porch over there. So now we've got better water pressure in here and we don't have to worry about this hitting the window now because the 15 footers trajectory was getting the window wet and this is a flat spray being an 8 footer so. So on this lawn line I've had oh about six or seven nozzles to replace because they were clogged um, and then there was that bonnet over there I had to replace because it was gurgling around the seal on that rainbird pop-up and on those rainbird pop-ups you can buy those bonnets by themselves I keep a bag of them on my truck all the time so this one here was barely popping up high enough it wasn't even spraying over the grass very well here and you can see why because it's that far under the grade that far below the grade and it's only a three inch pop-up so we're gonna take that off and put a four inch pop-up on here even with a four inch pop-up this is going to be too far below the grade so I'm going to use one of these half by three cutoff extensions and cut it to the right length to get it up a little higher. So by cutting the top two of these threads off, it made it just right. So there was only one set of threads and it put it just the right height, much better. Okay, we're done with this line. Now on to this one. Okay, on this line here, see a rainbow right there. I replaced these two nozzles, one under that shrub at the end, and tweaked a couple others. And that's it, and this line's doing okay. And that flower bed's fine, I didn't need to touch it. So we're ready to go to the backyard. Before I go to the back though, I'm going to go ahead and clean up all this and pick up the 
parts that I replaced and I'll make note of it on my sheet so that I can invoice properly in the patio here we've got two valves this one I think has been removed or something and we had water coming up over here and this line wasn't really working like it was supposed to. It's supposed to be apparently watering these baskets up here. But all we get is a water coming up. Well, I just turned the water on. This camellia has roots going this direction like this. And the water's coming out from under it. I dug this out a little bit. Isn't that about the goofiest? The concrete thing there for this post. I have a feeling it's this. It's probably busted back behind or underneath this thing. But can't prove it until I can prove it. Sure enough, it's under that concrete. I dug the valve box out and it was here. I had no idea what was in it. And I see that this valve here, number seven, uh, the piping comes out and goes to this defunct pressure regulator, I guess. Ancient thing. And then converts to drip. Goes under that concrete and to here. It may tee off under here. I'm not sure. But at least now we know sort of what's going on and can create some kind of plan of attack. What I'll do is I'll just take this assembly apart and cap it. And, well, no, I won't cap it. I'll take this assembly apart here, put on some kind of an adapter uh that we can attach the drip system to and then i'll have to cut this down here and attach it there this right here is actually an inline filter buried in the ground no way to service it brilliant boy it just keeps coming that's not even drip tubing, that's swing pipe. So this is going to be even more interesting. I may have to run all new drip tubing. We'll see. Okay, so I'm going to install a Rainbird Retro down there. So the first thing I did is I took that assembly off of there. I put a three quarter by half threaded bushing on there and two Marlex and then I'll put this on here using a swing arm and before I put the retro on I put a cap on that Marlex and I'm going to turn this line on to make sure we don't have any other leaks or issues down there before I put the retro on Okay, I've got everything uh, together. Now I want to turn this on and make sure that we've got full pressure here. Nice. To repair two of these brass valves on the property that weren't working, I came back two weeks later and took this old Rainbird valve apart but found that the only diaphragm I had on my truck that was close wasn't close enough. The bottom was different so I had to replace the entire valve with a Hunter PGV 101. Remember the valve number two in front that wasn't working? It was the same situation as in the back so I had to replace this one as well. 
Normally I replace the diaphragms if I can, but in this case, none of my local suppliers have this diaphragm and the owner wanted to get this system going, so we couldn't wait for me to try to find them online. Well, that's it for this inspection and repair job in the country club. I hope you learned some things. Hey, remember the free downloads that can help you with your irrigation systems and the resources site where you can get most of these products that you see on these videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.